I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be here today. It's a, a real honor. And uh, uh, what I've come today to do is to perhaps introduce you to my products. I, my products have been on the market professionally for over 40 years, 45 years actually to be exact. And in Hollywood, most of the makeup artists who really understand color theory and who understand the, the theory behind neutralizing, highlighting, and shading, they will choose my products, especially if they are doing something that is extremely critical that requires a great deal of longevity. For instance, a lot of the makeups that are on the market today are manufactured using oils and waxes that actually have a melting point that is below body temperature or very close to body temperature. So whenever you're applying a makeup, say a foundation or a neutralizing color or a highlighting or shading color, that is manufactured, well, let's say with isopropyl myristate. Isopropyl myristate is a derivative of coconut oil and it is extremely highly refined oil and it not only will be absorbed by the skin very, very quickly and easily, but it also has a melting point that is at the same, if not lower, than body temperature. So what happens is, it may go on beautifully and very quickly, but what happens is after 15 or 20 minutes, especially on the set, and especially if someone is, uh, has a high body temperature, it will begin to dissipate, it will begin to break down. It's going to start going away on you. So what does that mean? That means that as a professional makeup artist, you're going to be up in front of that camera, touching them up, making certain that the makeup is the way it was, or the way it should be, all day long. Now, two things happen when that occurs. Number one, you are really annoying the cameraman, the director, and all of the other people on set, and you're holding things up. Number two, even more importantly, honestly, is the fact that you are going to be always constantly in the actor's face, which is not a good thing. Because think about it. Whatever they may be doing, whatever part they may be playing, it's very important that they be able to stay within that realm of believability within their own head and stay within their character. And if you're constantly going up there and doing this and having to powder and having to do this and that, what happens is you annoy them and it becomes, it becomes, uh, it becomes a chore, you see, rather than, a, than, a, than a, a delightful thing for them to be performing. And eventually, and I've known several makeup artists who have gotten into this some, somewhat of a rut, and that is, is that they're constantly going up and constantly making changes and changes and changes, and it gets to a point where the performer themselves will not want that makeup artist around anymore. They would rather have someone that perhaps has a little less talent than someone that's going to be just constantly on them all the time. So be very, very careful. Now, why am I telling you this? And it's because the majority of makeups that call themselves professional makeups on the market today are manufactured with very, very inexpensive oils and waxes. And they have very little pigment. Now, makeup is made up of two parts, basically. Two parts to makeup. You have your pigment, which is ground earth pigment, various colors, there's approximately five colors, black, white, red, yellow, and blue. These are mixed together to get an assortment of various types of beiges and it's different types of browns and reds and whatnot. And all of these, these pigments are mixed together to create flesh tones from the lightest color to the very darkest color. And what happens is, is you take this pigment which is like a powder, a colored powder, and you melt down your waxes and your oils. Your waxes and oils are called the vehicle of the formulation, all right? You have your pigments and you have your waxes and oils. Now, depending on how much wax you put into the formula, that helps to control the consistency or it gives you the consistency that you want. The more wax, the thicker the product is going to be. The more oil, the thinner the product is going to be. So the, the vehicle has got to be balanced out perfectly, but you also have to consider, the chemist also has to consider that when they put the dry pigment into the vehicle, what's going to happen? It's going to thicken it up. It's going to make it heavier. It's going to make it thicker. It's going to, it's going to make it drier, 
all right? And, but there is one good thing that happens when you have this perfect blend of vehicle and pigment, and that is you have, as a cosmetics chemist and as a makeup artist, using makeup that is properly put together that way, and I'll explain exactly how, what I mean by properly put together, you have the advantage of having a product that may be very highly concentrated in its container. In fact, a novice may look at it and go, ooh, this is thick, this is heavy, but it's not. A true professional will look at that and go, whoa, that's very concentrated. Let me see how thin I can get this very highly pigmented onto the skin. All right, so let's go back to the waxes and oils. What happens is, depending on how you mix these waxes and oils and the pigment together to make the finished makeup, you end up with either a makeup that's going to be very thin, that doesn't give you coverage, that doesn't last a long time, that's going to wear down very, very quickly, all right? Or you're going to end up with a makeup that's going to have great coverage, is going to last a long time, and it is going to keep you from having to do a lot of work that's unnecessary. So how, we, how do we do that? Most makeups that are on the market today, they are, and these are all derivatives of the original, and some of you, you more mature ladies and gentlemen in the audience may remember Max Factor Pan Stick, Max Factor Pancake, all right? These were the original theatrical makeups that were used in motion pictures and television for many, many, many decades. And if you were to analyze the amount of pigment found in any pan stick makeup or in any of the, the stick makeups that are available today, as well as a lot of the cream makeups that are available today, you will find that the percentage of pigment is about 15 to 18%. All the rest is waxes and oils. So are you going to get good coverage? with a product that has the majority of its consistency made up of a translucent wax or a transparent oil? Of course not. You're not going to get, the only way that you get any kind of coverage with a makeup that has more waxes and oils in it is to put it on very, very thick and to powder every layer, put more on, powder it again. But let's say you have a makeup that has the pigment much higher than 15 to 18%. All right, so let's say we beef it all the way up to 45 to 50% pigment. What does this mean? If you have a makeup that has that much pigment in the container, you're going to be able to simply take that and pat your sponge onto it, and a lot of makeup is going to go onto that sponge. A lot more, but it's, you're going to be picking up pigment. So when you apply it, you can put it on very, very thin and get tremendous coverage. Now the pigment is very dry, right? it's a dry powder. So with the right blend between the amount of pigment and the amount of waxes and oils, you're able to get a makeup that will be perfect. It won't be too dry for dry skin, it won't be too oily for oily skin. So it's right down the middle. So it's able to be used on all different types of, of uh, complexion types, all right? Um, the makeups that I have created, and this was a long time ago. I started making my makeups back in 1979. I actually studied cosmetics chemistry with Ben Nye in 1969, and in 1968, actually. And it was the knowledge that Mr. Nye imparted into the, my little young brain at the time that enabled me to understand this, high, this pigmentation wax and oil ratio. So you're not going to find any other product on the market that has that much pigment. So there's really no other product on the market that's going to give you complete coverage with a very, very, very thin application. There are a lot of companies that have tried to duplicate the look of my formulas and even the look of the containers. But if you were to analyze the chemical composition of the makeups, you would find that none of them have a lot of pigment, but in place of the amount of pigment that we have, they have a lot of wax, a lot of wax. So what happens, you think that it's got good consistency, but that consistency really is given to you by the amount of wax rather than by the amount of pigment. Does everybody understand? 
Are you following me? All right? I don't want to be too technical. I'm trying not to be too technical. But it's important that you do understand that a professional makeup is a makeup that is specifically designed for a, a, a purpose, a medium. For instance, in motion pictures and television. Originally, in motion pictures, and in, uh, in, in motion pictures, there were different types of film that were used. And the various types of film stock required that the flesh tones, in order to reproduce naturally on film, required that the makeup that was used on the skin had a specific undertone to it. Eastman Kodak had to have a, 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 a pink undertone. Technicolor had to have a yellowish orange undertone. So the various types of film stock required various types of colors of makeup. So this is what Max Factor developed in the early 1930s and 40s and 50s, and all the way up through the 60s and 70s, actually. And it was at that point, Max Factor decided that they were not going to manufacture their professional makeup or their theatrical makeup, as they called it, any longer. And I was actually called into the, the conference room at the Max Factor company. And I went before the entire board of directors and Max Factor Jr. And they told me that they had researched all of the products that are on the market at that time and that they found that my products most closely resembled their products and that they were extremely impressed with the color line because we could go from extremely pale to extremely dark. There was no other line that had the wide range of color that my line had. And they actually turned over many of their retail accounts to me at that time and that's how we got started. So, we now have an understanding of what professional makeup is. It is a makeup that will be suitable for the type of medium that you're working in that will last a long time, will not break down under the hot lights or under the, uh, uh, with high body temperature, and will permit you to do a makeup, and that makeup will stay exactly as you've done it all day long with very, very few touch-ups. I once, I once, uh, worked with a makeup artist from France who shall remain nameless. And he came up to me and he said, Mr. Blasco, he says, I can't work with your makeup. And I said, well, why, Pierre? Why, why not? He says, well, he said, uh, it's too heavy. It's too thick. And I said, now I want you to think about this. Does that makeup, when you put it down on the table, does it jump from the container onto the face? Or do you have to put it there? And with your putting it there, doesn't that require technique and an understanding of how to work with a product to take a product that may be high in consistency, concentrated, and to make it work for you? And he went, oh, I never quite thought of it that way. You're right. It's how I touch this product with my sponge. It's how I take that sponge with that product and, and, and apply it to the face. It's all of that. It doesn't just jump from the container onto the face. He says, well, okay, let me see. So I started to work with him. He bought the entire line and he put it in his salon. So it's all about understanding professional makeup. And when you understand professional makeup, there are very few products on the market that are going to be acceptable to you because you're going to want a product that is going to have a lot of pigment, that's going to last a long time, that's going to match all your skin tones, and it's going to keep you from having to work more than you absolutely have to, bothering all the people on the set, okay? So, I'm going to show you a few things. This is Sydney, by the way, Sydney Haynes, one of my associates. And we are, we are opening a makeup store, a professional makeup store, uh, down in uh, Noonan. I don't know if you know, that's a little community far south of here. And uh, we're going to be servicing most of the motion picture makeup artists at uh, Pinewood Studios and at Me Atlanta Metro Studios and Raleigh Studios, hopefully. And uh, the, it, this is definitely going to be a factory outlet, by the way. So whenever you come to our, and we call it Mega Makeup Store, M-E-G-A Makeup Store, Mega Makeup Store. And if you went online to MegaMakeupStore.com right now, you would see that there are certain products on that site 
that are only my products, but we're going to be carrying many other products as well. And uh, one of the other most featured lines that we're going to have uh, are, is going to be the Graftopian makeup products. Are you familiar with Graftopian? Do you know Graftopian? If you don't, you should become familiar with it because the Graftopian line and my line are extremely similar. They're very high in pigment. They have a very wide range of color and they work very well and they're very compatible with my products. What do we have here? Uh, these here, for instance, are all of the tan colors. There's a myriad of tan colors. These colors are able to be used for, for Caucasian men, all right, and, and uh, for, for lighter, uh, lighter uh, African American, and as well as American Indian and East Indian. All, there are dark skin colors and light skin colors that are extremely adaptable, and you're able to actually match the skin tones almost perfectly, if not perfectly once you get, get the eye, and they can be mixed very well. Now, here's another thing that you have, to, you have to understand. Because there is almost an equal amount of pigment to waxes and oils, you're able to apply these makeups not only with a dry sponge, but you can also wet the sponge and apply it like a pancake makeup. And when you apply it like a pancake makeup and you have a wet sponge, what happens is, is your, your wet sponge repels the waxes and oils and absorbs the pigment. So you are then spreading dry pigment on the skin. And if someone has oily skin, you want to use the sponge a little wet, a little damp. Why? Because they have oily skin, you don't want to put more oil on, so you want to use your sponge wet so that you pick up more pigment than you pick up oil and wax. The oil and wax is, stays in the container, the water absorbs the pigment, and you are able to spread a beautiful thin veil of color that will also give you great coverage, all right? Now, on the other hand, if you have dry skin, you use a dry sponge. Why? Because the dry sponge is going to absorb the oil. All right, and there's going to be oil and wax on your, on your sponge, and you need that because your client's skin is dry. All right, so just remember, dry, dry skin, dry sponge. Oily skin, wet sponge. It's that simple, all right? Now, thank you, thank you, Sydney. Here we go, let's show that. I want to show you the variation of colors. I was one of the very first manufacturers, uh, one of the first chemists to manufacture really well thought out makeup foundations for women and men of color for motion pictures and television. When I was working with Ben Nye in his laboratory in Santa Monica where he taught me makeup artistry as well as, as um, uh, the uh, cosmetics chemistry, uh, we were manufacturing makeup for African Americans but we weren't manufacturing it really for his line. He had about five colors in his line in the, in the 20 series, like 25, 26, 27, 28, down to 30. Those were colors that were used for dark skin. There was an, another company that came to us by the name of Barbara Walden. I don't know if you remember Barbara Walden Cosmetics. Okay, well, we manufactured her makeup, and she was if probably one of the very first companies to want to have a complete line for women of color. But we were manufacturing that for them. But they were very orangey colors and they were very yellow colors. And the person that was really creating the line for her was not really that knowledgeable of skin tone and undertone. And therefore the line was not what it could have been. So late, years later, what I did was I did, and this was after I'd been working in television for, for 20 years, and I had many, many uh, uh, African-American clients that I worked with, and I worked with, with uh, several people who had various uh, skin colors that went from extremely pale all the way to what you see down here, all right? And you can see the wide range of colors here. All right, and as well as right here. These are, now when you, look at, when you look at someone's skin tone, you look into their skin tone. When they sit in your chair, you look at them and you really look very closely at their skin tone and you ask yourself, what do I see? What do I see within that skin? What's the undertone of that skin? 
It's either going to be reddish, which we call ruddy, or it's going to be yellowish green, which we call olive. All right, so what did I do? Knowing, and all the makeups that were made for African-American people, for women of color, men of color, all of those makeups were all very orangey. So they weren't really considering the fact that there may be olive undertones in the skin, right? Yellowish green. So I came along and I did, this is the Ruddy series, okay? Ruddy dark skin number one, all the way through here to number eight. We actually had a number nine and a number 10, and we can make those colors on special order. And when you go down and you visit the Mega Makeup Store in Noonan, what you'll see is all of these colors. You'll be able to touch them and test them. As a matter of fact, today, please go over to my booth, look at the makeups, feel them, all right? See what, what the consist consistency is and feel how different it is from anything else that you have available to you professionally today. So we have the ruddy dark skin, all right, for people who do have ruddy undertones, or for those people who have very, very over-the-top olive undertones that need to be neutralized. So you could take a ruddy tone, put it on someone that has very olive skin, and neutralize it. But you've got to be careful, because unless you're going to do the entire body, that may not work for you. So what did I do? I invented the All of Dark Skin series. And the All of Dark Skin series starts from light to dark, and this is for those individuals who have that yellowish green undertone in their skin. All right, yellowish green. Now, depending on the degree of yellow and green, it has a tendency sometimes as it gets darker and darker and darker, and there's more and more of the green and a little bit of the yellow, it has a bit of a bluish undertone. All right, so there were no makeups on the market that helped to, 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 uh, to actually uh, 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 take that bluish undertone and make it look good. They were all too yellow or they were all too green. So what I did was I did a very, very careful blend of yellow and green to create just the perfect undertone for people with all of undertone, all right? So these were firsts, these were firsts of their kind. Now there are a lot of companies that have come along and have tried to copy this, but what they do, and there's a really, really big, big company, all right, that has almost the same initials as this show does, all right, and I, they will remain nameless, but when I started my cosmetics company, they had people coming in to Columbia Cosmetics in Hollywood, which was the first outlet that I had. This was back in 1982. And uh, that very soon after that, these two gentlemen who created this other line of cosmetics came out with their line, and it was identical to my line. It looked like my line. The containers were like my line, right? And when you touched the product, it felt a little bit like mine, all right? But what they were doing, and what has still been continued today by the new company that owns that company, is, is that they don't put a lot of pigment in their makeup, but they try to make it feel like there's a lot of pigment in the makeup by putting a lot of what? Wax, heavy wax, okay? So watch out for that, all right? So those people, those makeup artists in the know who really want to do a makeup that is going to just, just jump out at you on screen. And these, these makeups, when you see them on screen, you will see the difference between this and any of the other products. Because what happens is because there's so much pigment in these products, it creates a very thin layer, but it also creates a very perfect finish. You can't get a perfect finish with a very thin makeup because thin makeups do not have enough pigment in them to provide you, number one, with the coverage that you need to make it perfect, and number two, they have too much oil in them and they dissipate very, very quickly and they, you can't get any kind of coverage and you can't get any longevity with a heavily, heavily oiled or waxed makeup. So these were the two lines that came out for women and men of color and then, we have, even for lighter men and women of color, we have the Golden Olive series. This is two, four, five, six, eight, and nine. And when you come over to my booth, you can take a look at these and you'll see the undertone and how well they, they would work on lighter dark skin. And then down at the bottom here, these are even darker. 
And um, uh, this is uh, gold in all of 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I believe that's 16 there if my eyes are, are serving me. So these are, this, this board right here represents every color that you need to choose from in order to create a very perfect and flawless foundation. All right, so once you have your foundation, then everything else kind of falls into place. The most important part of your makeup is the foundation. If you don't use a foundation, you're not, you're, 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 I don't know what you're doing. You're, you're paddling up, upstream without a paddle, really, or you're, you're paddling against the, the current because you really need to have a good solid foundation in order to blend the other colors that you're going to apply afterwards. And what are those colors? All right, let's get the... You have, we, now you understand that there's, there's a certain amount, I don't even know if I'm gonna get to doing the makeup here. Number one, my table is a little small. <laughs> but I'm gonna try and get to this. Um, I brought a whole thing that you, you lay out here. I should open this out on the table here so you can see. When, we, when I work, I take a small case. I don't like carrying a, a giant case like I'm gonna do Ben-Hur or Quo Vadis or King of Kings or you know what I mean? These are big epic films. Uh, we, we used to be a joke. We used to be a joke at ABC Television and at Universal Studios. And, and I did this. When I first started to make up, well, I would come in and I'd roll these big giant cases and with the wheels, you know, big giant wheels. And I had a case that stood this, this, this big and it had all kinds of sections to it. And I'd open it up and I went to do the, the news at ABC Television, right? I'm just gonna make up newscasters. You know, I'm a kid, I'm like 19 years old. I walk in and I lay out all my stuff, you know, and the head of makeup for ABC, Rudy Horvatish, he walks in and he goes, oh my God, oh, take this, put this all away, quick, 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 don't. I said, what, 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 what? He, says, he says, you're not doing Ben-Hur. He says, you're just making up a couple of newscasters, you know. So from that point on, I realized you don't need everything that you see advertised on television or in the magazines, all right? You don't need all this stuff. If you have a sense of color and you know how to mix color and you know how to put these foundations and red neutralizers and blue neutralizers and, uh, and, and uh, the Dermaseal concealing products, you know how to put them all together and you understand exactly how the pigmentation works and the oil and waxes, you understand all of that, you don't need all that. You can mix your colors, all right? Now obviously, there's a, there's a lot that you, know, you have to, you, you know, if you're working for a cosmetics company, Obviously, you're going to carry the entire line with you, right? If you're working, you know, uh, if you're working in a studio and you have a permanent position in the studio in the makeup department, then you want to keep your whole line there so that it's permanently set up so that you can, you know, pick and choose and do whatever you want. So, but what I, what I, this is, this small little case dates way back to like the late 1960s. And uh, it's a, it was made by a company called Gershner. And it was, uh, it was a Max Factor case. It was one of the very few Max Factor cases that came out in this color. And I've been using this thing ever since, ever since they told me that I looked like I was an amateur because I had too much makeup set up. So I switched to this. And what you do is you have to, after you work so many years in the industry, once you've been out there and you've had all this experience and you've worked with all kinds of people and all kinds of personalities and all kinds of people of color, all right, from the lightest to the darkest, and you, you know what you need. You know what minimal amounts of products and colors you need. And you then start to minimize the amount of product that you put in your makeup case so that you're not having to drag this big, giant, huge thing around. Now, we'll sell you a big case. We have the biggest and most beautiful cases that are manufactured, okay? We've got Mona cases in our store that are the most amazing cases, but they're really big cases. Now, me, you know, I'm not doing all that much these days, but when I get a call, I go in, I do a celebrity, I bring my little case with me, and they look at me and they go, oh my God, what are you gonna do with that, you know? And then I show them. But, so be cautious with the amount of product that you've towed around, okay? Uh, especially if you're gonna do any work in Hollywood or New York, because if you walk into one of the TV studios there and you set up like I did, they're gonna laugh at you. We don't want that. We get enough trouble as it is. All right, what do we have here? So we know foundations. 
We know that our foundations are between 45 and 55 percent pigment. We know we can use them wet. We know we can use them dry. What about highlighting colors, cream highlighting colors for getting rid of the circles under the eyes? What about shading colors for narrowing down the nose or bringing up the cheekbones or getting rid of the fat tissue under your jawline? Well, we have all of those colors also, and they are all cream, and they are all also the same pigmentation as the foundation, all right? So you have 45 to 55% pigmentation in those colors as well. So that makes them compatible. And now when I say uh, we have, this is dark skin highlight. For instance, this is a color that's used as a highlight on dark skin, all right, obviously. Then there's pink highlight and uh, there is orange highlight. All right, now let me explain this to you. If you have gray circles under the eyes, you can't just take a white stick and put it under there, because then you're gonna have light gray circles. If you have blue under the eyes, you put white under there, you're gonna have light blue, all right? You have red under the eyes, you're gonna have pink, all right? So in the old days, it doesn't work anymore. Now we have to understand color and neutralization. If you have, if you have blue under your eyes, you need a color that is opposite on the color wheel of the blue. So if you want to neutralize the blueness and highlight also, because this, this color is lighter than the foundation, it all, it, you, you select a highlighting color that is orange. And what do I call mine? Orange highlight, all right? So you have orange highlight number one, you have orange highlight number two, you have orange highlight number one and two. So there's a various, various colors, and we have them, I believe, at the booth. So these, now, for blue under the eyes, you use orange highlight. For red under the eyes, you use the yellow highlight, okay? I have a, a color called special yellow highlight. This color, however, is a universal highlight, and not only is used under the eyes if you have redness under the eyes, but it's also used in other areas of the face where you want to lift the face forward, where you want to sculpt, where you want to contour, where you want to reflect more light, okay? Now... Uh, we also have, uh, uh, it goes beyond this, we have uh, the orange highlight, we have the pink highlight, and there's a, uh, uh, the pink also, here's, this is important, the pink highlight is great if you have people that have brown under their eyes or if they have gray under their eyes. The pink gives it some life, all right? So you have your highlights cover covered. There's red neutralizers also that are used for getting rid of redness in the skin. And then we have, now these are all 55% pigment, like the foundation, but then let's say you wanted to put, you wanted to, you had a problem that was really, really bad, really difficult to cover, and you could neutralize it to a, only to a certain point using these neutralizing colors. What would you do? What would you use if, you, if these really weren't working well for you? Well, you'd have to select a color that had, or a product that had more pigmentation. So if this has 55% pigment, you'd like to jump up, let's say, ideally to a, color, a, a product that has about 65 or 70% pigmentation. So it's a heavier consistency. Those are called tattoo covers, all right? Now, let's say the tattoo covers don't work and you really need to cover something. You move up to 85% pigmentation. And these are called Dermaseal, and there's a wide range of them right here that are used to conceal rather than to neutralize. A lot of makeup artists will like these more so than they do the highlighting and shading colors or because they are a heavier, more dense formula. You can put more of it on and it will last much longer you can actually increase the pigmentation of the 55% pigmented products by adding the Dermaseal to them. So you, you have an 85% pigmented product and a 55% pigmented product. You mix them together and you get any percentage of pigment that you want. I'm trying to talk fast because I'm not used to being squeezed into 45 minutes. So I, I hope this is okay by you guys. All right, that's good. Let me have that down there. I want to show you... Uh, Oh my, this is cool. You know, uh, uh, Sydney, Sydney made all of these, by the way. Didn't he do a good job? He really did a good job. Let's hear it for Sydney. <laughs> okay, I keep calling him Stanley. I don't know why. I understand. All right, so we have, 
Uh, these are lipsticks that we have, and we have some really unusual colors of lipsticks that you want to check out. And by the way, we have orange highlight also in stick form. We have orange highlight in stick form, and we have yellow highlight in stick form, so you can check that out. These are eyeshadows that we have, some of the eyeshadows, and these are more eyeshadows, more eyeshadows, and uh, they're, these are dry, pressed powder eyeshadows, and then we have cream eyeshadows that we call Ultimat that are 85% pigment. And I designed these for General Hospital, the soap opera at ABC, because they were always crying, and their, their, their eyeliner and everything was always dripping down their face. So they came to me and they said, Mr. Blasco, can you make something that's not gonna roll down the person's face? I said, sure. So I remembered the old Ben Nye beard stipple, and we used to put a lot of pigment in that beard stipple. And that was a product that you'd stipple on the face to make it look as though you, had a, you hadn't shaved in a couple of days. And uh, so I took that understanding of pigmentation and I created an eyeshadow in cream form that has 85% pigment. So when you put this on, it goes on, it stays, and it's not going anywhere. It's also very, very good, and by the way, all the line is very good for swimming scenes. Great for swimming scenes because it will not come off in water, all right? Okay, so we have all of these and I welcome you to come to the booth to check all these out. And uh, let me see, what do we have down here? Now these are cheat colors. These are cheat colors that I designed specific to different, different types of, of film and television electronics. All right, and, but ironically enough, and I suppose it's logical, that if they're going to work for HD, for television or HD film processes, digital processes, it's also going to work in real life, eye to eye, all right? So these are the, from the very, the most muted colors that have just a touch of warmth to them to the very rich colors. And these can be used for both men and women. A couple of these are actually duplicate colors from the original Max Factor line for uh, light technicolor, there was a color called light technicolor, which is right here, and there was a color called dark technicolor, which is, where is it, right here, and then there was a, um, where's the other one, cinecolor, cinecolor is right here. But these, these, and not only are they, these here, down here, these are the cheek colors that are in dry form. Now here's something else you need to understand. Most cheek, cheek colors that you buy, in any of the stores that you go to, in all the lines, these products are all dry applied. Mine are made with a water soluble pigment so that they're adaptable and you can apply them with a wet sponge or a wet brush. What you can do is you apply this dry, all right? And you know how sometimes it'll look dry and it doesn't look real, it doesn't have that dewy, nice natural look. You put it on dry first, and then you get a wet brush, all right, like this, just like this, and you dampen it, you, you blot it out, and you just do this over it, right over it. And what happens is, is it activates the water-soluble pigments, and it creates a, a nice gleam, a gleam of translucency. So it looks as though the color is coming from within the skin rather than sitting on top of the skin. All right, so keep that in mind. And those are all of the, and I'm talking about not only cheek colors, which is unusual to have a water applied cheek color. All right, and you can think of all different kinds of ways of doing this, of working with it because it is adaptable that way. And, um, but also the um, eyeshadows are all wet and dry applied. You can put them on dry and then go through them with a damp brush and activate them. Now, here is a very unique product. It's called Pro Touch. Pro Touch. These are highlighting colors, basically, and there's one color here that could be a cheek color, and these are, are products, let me see, and there's, there's several of them here. There's these here, okay, and these here are Pro Touch. And what you do with these are, these are wet and dry applied, and you use them for highlighting, you use them for shading, you can use them for eyeshadow, all right, I'm gonna, at this point, now here's, here's more, I'm gonna try and get through this quickly. These are pressed powders, and I just want you to see the range of colors. Where have you seen a range of colors like that? Okay, 
fooled you. You thought this was going to be darker, didn't you? All right. So these are um, um, absolutely amazing colors. And uh, what you do is when you do a, a, a man or a woman of color and you need a translucent powder, you take these and you just dust them on very, very lightly, very, very lightly, and you take a damp sea sponge or a damp brush. You take a larger brush, say like this, you dampen it, and you just very lightly go over the entire face, and it just brings out that real dewy HD finish that everybody wants so bad, all right? And these companies are coming out with all these so-called HD makeups, which is really nothing but a gimmick, okay? It's just a gimmick. And, and uh, it, it, they're difficult to get coverage with, they're liquids, it, it just doesn't work. And so what, we've do what we're doing is we, are, we, we still need coverage, even with HD. And a lot of people, a lot of makeup artists will say, well, HD, we don't need to do a lot of makeup for HD. No, it's exactly the opposite. For HD, you have to do a much more precise makeup. You have to do more makeup, but it has to, because you've got to get coverage. You still want to make people look good. You don't want to show off all their flaws, right? Oh, we can't do a lot of makeup because, you know, it's got to look like natural. Well, what if the person looks terrible? You want to let them look that way? You want to keep them looking terrible, right? No, you don't want to do that. You want to correct them. You want to get rid of those dark circles under their eyes. You want to manipulate and contour their face properly. And the only way you're going to do that is you have a makeup that's going to work. So these products work. You put them on very, very thin, and guess what? Put them on thin, what do you have? You have an HD makeup. But you have an HD makeup that's really going to make a difference. Right? It's going to work. And the cameraman will come up to you and they'll say, hey, uh, what are you using? I, their flesh, these flesh tones really look great. I, I, I don't see any flaws. I don't, you know, you've, you've cut all the freckles down. You've cut all the moles out. You've got rid of all the redness. But I don't see any makeup on the face. This is why. Because it's highly pigmented. And because it didn't jump from the container onto the face, you knew well enough exactly what to do and how to apply it, all right? Because you understood the theory. And if you want to understand this even more, I'm teaching classes starting in August down at Pinewood Studios in my makeup department there, all right? And I'm doing this, I'm doing this with, it's a graduate class. I'm only taking people who have either graduated from Gwyneth Mosby's makeup school or from my makeup school in Orlando, or uh, from graduates that have graduated from any other makeup school, all right? Uh, and uh, it, considered a graduate. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm introducing makeup artists to my line. I'm introducing makeup artists to my techniques, which are completely different than anything that you've seen in magazines or in any of the old makeup books. Uh, and you need, to, you need to understand that. When you work and you learn correctly, and you work correctly, your, 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 your telephone is going to be ringing off the hook. People are going to want you because they're not going to see this kind of result, the kind of result that you're able to give because you're working with the correct product, because you're using the correct techniques, techniques that are unlike any other techniques. This is what I'm setting out to do. I've come to Georgia to work with Gwyneth. I'm gonna be working with her. I am looking forward to actually going to her school and teaching classes at Gwyneth's school to introduce my products and my techniques, all right? And we're going to, together, teach the local makeup people how to do makeup Hollywood style, all right? Not from just self-taught, you know, a lot of, I gotta say, I gotta tell you, there are a lot of really great makeup artists in Atlanta. There are a lot of great makeup artists all over the country in every city, but most of them are relearning things that people my age had already perfected a long time ago. And why are they relearning and teaching themselves self-taught? It's because they didn't go to a school that teaches from, or the, the teacher that they had didn't have years and years and years of experience in the industry. Gwyneth has had decades in the industry doing makeup. I don't even want to tell you how long I've been doing makeup. I started when I was seven years old, and there hasn't been a day in my life since then that I didn't have a makeup brush in my hand, and I'm 70, all right? So, pushing 80. <laughs> so, 
you know, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a wonderful thing, and I'm very excited about it. I'm excited about working with Gwyneth as, as graduates, and uh, we may have, together, she and I may pull together some kind of a, a, a beginner's type of program. And, uh, but my whole goal of coming here was to, to teach the local makeup artists how we did makeup and do makeup still in Hollywood, so that they don't have to bring people in from Hollywood. You know, that's what it's all about. Hey, this industry is growing rapidly here. Why should we have other people come in that may not be teaching you properly or may not really want to teach you in the first place? I want to teach you. That's what I've done all my life. I started the world's first school for makeup artistry in Hollywood back in 1968. That school is now called EI, Elegance International. Do you know that school? I started that school. They won't tell you that, but I started that school. Then I went back into the industry and then I started another school in 1974, which was the Joe Blasco Makeup Center in Hollywood, all right? Then from there, we opened one in Orlando, we opened one in Tennessee, Nashville. I shut down the Tennessee, I shut down the Hollywood, and now I'm here. So this is my retirement. Thank you. This is my retirement, and I'm really looking forward to working with everyone. All right, thank you all so much. You've been really wonderful. I hope I haven't talked too fast. <laughs> hope to see you soon.